Greetings, Captain. I am speaking to you through the Hope's computer system. It's a rather cramped feeling, but it'll do. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the Hope will void the warranty on the skip drive. And also potentially kill an entire planet. How is my humor now, Captain? Improved? Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to the rings of Terra 2. I wouldn't advise that, Captain. In case I don't get another chance to say it, it's been interesting, Captain. Admitting a deficit? My, you never cease to amaze me, Captain. Skipping the hope in three, two, one. ADA, does your captain seriously intend to do a micro jump in system with engines that haven't been powered in 70 years on a derelict ship? That is what my captain intends, yes. But that is a gross misuse of the skip drive. The Zero Point Drives Corp and I will not be held responsible for any damage incurred during transport, and this will cause extreme damage. Yes, I am aware of that. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. Thank you, Hope. It looks like all systems are go. Captain, I would advise you to hold on to something, now. Good. We are still alive and have successfully skipped into Terra 2's orbit. I reported as much to Phineas Wells, but he has not responded. Perhaps you should check in on him. Captain, I shall now play the transmission I received from Dr. Wells. The board is here. They've found me somehow. They're about to blast my door open. I can't stop them from getting me, and there isn't enough time to explain everything. But there's something very important you'll need to remember. The board. All their lackeys, they're all a bunch of swine. Do you hear me? They're fucking corporate swine. You fucking pigs! I'll take you all out with me! I'll never... It would seem the recording captured some rather dire events. I presume you'll want to dock at the orbital lab to check on your associate as soon as possible? Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. So, Phineas got himself taken to Tartarus. That's usually a one-way trip. I never got to know Doc Wells. We ain't friends or crew. But he's still one of us. He's the reason the boss is up and walking right now. We can't just leave him to die in Tartarus. To extract a scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Let's just do it. Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs and close out any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while. Or permanently. It's the craziest plan I've ever heard. And I mean that as a compliment. You didn't hire me to think. And I ain't about to start now. You're my boss. 
and I'll walk into fire with you. I know it's dangerous, and I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits, but I couldn't live with myself if we didn't do something. The entire plan is a terrible idea, but I admire your bravado, Captain, which leads me to illogically believe, against the odds, that you will be successful. We gonna prepare? Sure. Guess I could give my ass-kicking boots another coat of polish. You got some sort of plan in mind? Let's try to stay off of the main thoroughfares, then. I don't want to have to hurt anyone who don't got it coming. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention. Unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. You're up to 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. All right, I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the idea of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. The captain did right by us once. What's that noise? The board will never own Groundbreaker. Not while I breathe. Push on, my dad. What was that? What? What was that? What? Nice 
going to leave us a few options.
Well, look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? The captain's treated me right. Better than any of you board folk ever have. I'm exactly where I want to be. Ah, oh, and the wayward doctor. Are you about done with your escapades? We have faces that need lifting, after all. These days, I'm more interested in breaking them. Wouldn't mind taking a swing at yours. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. I'm not in your way, you dullard. You talk to me. You want to go die in a blaze of glory? Be my guest. Besides, I don't know what you think you're doing here, but Sophia's doing good work up there with Phineas. Your efforts will be in vain. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working-class man. It's a miracle. Oh, yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? We're helping, which is more than you can say. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. If I and my people can ride it out in luxury and happiness, yes, yes, I would. I don't know if you've noticed, Captain, but Halcyon's pretty much a lost cause. You... you have? Is that what you were doing at the Ministry? Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive... Ugh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. Captain, you have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. Do you imagine you're leading some grand revolutionary army? I never imagined I'd see the day the Mardets assaulted my prison. Yet here we are. You're nothing but a rabble-rouser. 
I'm going to put an end to your little rebellion. And then I'm going to have you and your associates arrested. I have no intention of dying on Tartarus, Captain. Not when there's so much work left to do. I admit I miscalculated the extent of your influence. The board's plan never accounted for you. This is a mistake I intend to correct. I have Dr. Wells in my custody. Once I've secured his cooperation, I can move forward with the program. I can repair the damage you've done. I can set things right. I'm aware of your propensity for violence. Halcyon is a bloodier place because of you. I take no pleasure in this, you know. I simply have no other option. Leaving you alive is too great a risk. Goodbye, Captain. If you insist. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. Get me out of here. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you... You lunatic! You broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man! You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I know, my friend, I know. And now it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. 
I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. I heard it from Akande herself. She tried to pressure me into joining her side, you see. Tried to make me realize that all hope is lost, and that we are alone. She was half right. We are alone, and we're going to have to fend for ourselves, because there's no telling what's happened to Earth. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. Yes, Akande mentioned as much. Earth hasn't sent us a single message in three years. No one knows why. Akande had kept the truth to herself, perhaps with good reason. Can you imagine what would have happened if word got out? We'd have utter pandemonium. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you. But after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll learn to forgive myself. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions... Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the Hope's brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope's scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Left unchecked, 
the war on monarch consumed both MSI and the iconoclasts. And when the sulfur cloud settled, only stragglers from both factions remained. Some found their way to Sublight, some to Terra too, and some lived their final years fighting for food in the wilderness. In the end, only the beasts remained. Without Lilia Hagen, Sublight Salvage fell apart. The company fractured, devolving into a series of unregulated criminal gangs, fences, and smugglers. Their facade of legitimacy quickly faded. In time, the Sublight family was forgotten. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide McDevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. Under the leadership of Junle Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence further cemented Ellie's perspective. She understood she could never truly rely on others, so she set about making sure she wouldn't have to. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She enjoyed a long and infamous career running missions across the system. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Maelstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, Junle bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. Traveling with the crew served as a constant reminder of the family she'd lost, and so she eventually returned to Monarch to get back to what she found most comfortable, the deep end of a bottle and the far end of a trail. Few have seen her since, but travelers often swear they hear her and her machine gun in the night, screaming swears and spitting bullets. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify, for combat purposes, a sanitation and maintenance auto-mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remained broken down and forgotten, 
in the unreliable supply closet to this day. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.